Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i3-3225 Dual Core Ivy Bridge Processor which uses the LJ1155 socket. Before we continue I'd like to thank Forticus for providing me this product. Once again we're looking at an Intel Core i3 processor, the i3-3225 to be specific. On this side you can see all the special features this CPU offers, the most special one being the Intel HD Graphics 4000. On the back of the box as always is the description in different languages. Now on the other side are some specifications to see, like the model name, clock speed, cache, socket and TDP. On the top you can see the CPU inside the box. Alright now let's open the box up and see what's inside. There we go, here are the installation instructions and on the back is a sticker. Then of course you also get a stock cooler, which is fairly small I have to admit. Thermal paste comes reapplied already and the fan uses a 4 pin fan connector. And last but not least the CPU inside the plastic protection. I'll quickly take it out so we can take a closer look at it. Here it is, it looks very basic but nice, what else could you expect? For this review I installed this processor in the MSI C77A GD65 motherboard which obviously uses the C77 flagship chipset. But let's get to the specifications. The Intel Core i3-3225 is a dual core Ivy Bridge CPU with a base clock of 3.3GHz but there is no turbo boost technology feature. The Intel HD Graphics 4000 is used and a TDP of just 55 watts is quite low due to the 22 nanometer architecture. 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache and 3 megabytes of level 3 cache is offered. This CPU of course supports dual channel DDR3 1600 memory natively. In CPU-C your i3 CPU transforms into a quite powerful i5 processor for free. No, I'm just joking around, i3 stays i3. CPU-C doesn't quite yet detect the Ivy Bridge i3 CPUs that well. However, this only affects the processor name and the logo on the right. Under specifications, the i3 gets detected. As always, the voltage is very low on these Ivy Bridge CPUs, but not quite as low as on the previous generation Sandy Bridge chips. The latest instructions are supported and to save energy, the CPU will automatically clock itself down on idle to 1.6 GHz instead of constantly running at 3.3 GHz. In terms of overclocking, the Intel Core i3 processors still have a locked multiplier and therefore it makes overclocking not easy at all. If you'd like to overclock, you have to get yourself a K-series CPU, the cheapest one currently being the i5-3570K. As for the memory, I got 8GB of DDR3 2000MHz RAM installed and this CPU supports this kit very well. So in terms of memory frequency support, these Ivy Bridge CPUs are just fantastic. But let's move on to the benchmarks.
So there you go, the Intel Core i3-3225 definitely offers great performance. You might be asking why are the i3-3220 and 3225 so close in terms of CPU performance. Well, these pretty much are the same processors, but the only difference between these two are the integrated graphics. The i3-3220 still uses the old HD 2500 iGPU, while the i3-3225 uses the new HD 4000 graphics, which is also featured on the flagship Core i7 CPU. However, if you take it very very precisely, the i3-3225, which cuts a little bit more than the 3220, performs a little bit worse than the cheaper i3-3220. But overall, just as the i3-3220 keeps up with the Core i5 and i7 CPUs in terms of gaming, so does the i3-3225. However, for the same price you could also get the AMD FX6300, which offers pretty much the same gaming experience, but even more performance and applications. The only drawback would be the power consumption. The i3-3225 has a very low one to be honest. Please keep in mind that all the other CPUs on the power consumption chart were using the GTX 560 as the graphics card, while for the i3-3225 I had to use the GTX 660. As for the temperatures, the AMD FX6300 definitely is the best one, because I tested that one with the stock cooler, while the rest of the CPUs were either cooled down by the Cooler Master V6 GT air cooler or the Corsair H100i water cooler. The temperatures are completely normal with just 50 degrees Celsius at max with the H100i, but the i3-3220 ran cooler, probably because of the lower end iGPU. But long story short, get the CPU if you're not planning to get a discrete graphics card, as this CPU has the best Intel HD graphics solution at the time of this video. The raw CPU performance pretty much is identical to the i3-3220. So if you're going with a nice discrete graphics card anyways, you shouldn't buy the i3-3225 as it costs more for the same CPU performance and can run a little hotter overall. If you'd like to overclock and have more performance for the price you pay, you should definitely consider buying the AMD FX6300 as it costs the same as the i3 CPUs at the time of this video. Just keep in mind the power consumption. Pros are good CPU performance, the Intel HD Graphics 4000 iGPU is featured, the CPU supports high frequency memory and has a low power consumption. Cons are it doesn't have the best price performance ratio because the AMD FX6300 offers better performance for the same price. Then it has a locked multiplier, therefore it makes overclocking very hard, which isn't the case on the FX6300 at the same price. And the CPU runs hotter due to the stronger Intel HD graphics 4000 iGPU. But other than that, it's a great processor and I give it a 7 out of 10 and would definitely recommend it. Again, I'd like to thank Fortecas for providing me this product. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.